Dr. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you for having me. Japanese American incarceration. Exciting. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Uh, you, you write in this book that uh, between 1942 and 1945, the United States government wrongfully imprisoned thousands of Japanese American citizens and profited from their labor. What is the story behind this? A little bit about how I got interested in this topic. It came out of research that I was doing for my second book, which was about Asian Americans and their struggle for civil rights in the South. So I went to Arkansas to do some research there, not on this topic, but while I was at the State Archives, I found boxes and records relating to the two incarceration camps that were there. So there was Rower and Jerome, and they were located in the Mississippi Delta River area of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't know much about this subject, especially that topic. And when I did more research, I discovered, found out and learned more about the type of work that Japanese Americans did while they were in these camps. And so that was the story that really hadn't been explored in any larger book length form. Mm -hmm. The idea that Japanese Americans weren't forced to work. Mm -hmm. So when Japanese Americans were removed by the army from the West Coast and put into one of the 10 prison camps, there was this agreement they weren't going to be forced to do work while they were there. Mm -hmm. However, they were strongly urged <laughs> to do work. Mm -hmm. And so whether that was work that helped to sustain the camps, so keep the camps running, for instance, one of the biggest occupations would be in any of the camps working in the mess halls. So serving food, cooking, growing food was a huge undertaking. So Japanese Americans in the camps were expected to produce their own food, to feed themselves. So in a lot of ways, their labor is being used to pay for their own imprisonment. So the government can save money with this whole incarceration project by shifting the burden for subsistence onto the prisoners themselves. And then the other part of this was using Japanese Americans to do work for private industries mm -hmm. inside and outside of the camps. So mm -hmm. there were labor contractors who got contracts from the military and the government who went into the camps and used Japanese Americans to produce war goods. And then there were also programs to tempor temporarily release Japanese Americans to go work with farmers, private farmers on the outside to grow crops that were considered important for the war effort. Mm -hmm. Another thing that Japanese Americans did in the camps was complete infrastructure programs that mm -hmm. were put on hold because of the war. So there wasn't the labor there to make the necessary completions. So the government, and with the help of the army, when they selected the locations for the camps, a big consideration was what kind of labor opportunities would exist to keep Japanese Americans kind of quote busy, keep them out of trouble, keep mm -hmm. them focused, and then what could they do to improve the land that they were on? Mm -hmm. So this is, for me, a part of the story that's often left out of Japanese American incarceration. The work that they performed, who they performed it for, mm -hmm. and again, it wasn't it wasn't technically forced labor because they signed a contract. So mm -hmm. the army was very clear that if you sign a contract, this is free labor, but they were coerced. Mm -hmm. They really didn't have many options unless they did work. Mm -hmm. So that was the story that, that I was trying to get at with this book. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the overlap with the military and the government and larger histories of labor in the United States. So that was a little mm -hmm. bit of background about how I came to the project, mm -hmm. but also what was the story that I was trying to get at in mm -hmm. this book. So how did um, these imprisoned Japanese Americans respond to the stripping of not only their civil rights, but their labor rights as well? Yeah, that was the other part of the story that I wanted to tell, not just uh -huh. the policy, mm -hmm. so sort of the top-down policy of this, who was behind it, but also, like you said, what was the response to it? Mm -hmm. And there, they really ranged on a wide spectrum of responses. So one big action that Japanese Americans in different camps took was to go on strike. Mm -hmm. So they would have sort of designated leaders. Some of these individuals had previous labor organizing experience before they came to the camps. And so mm -hmm. this was kind of a natural step for them. So they would organize kind of secretly. They tried to keep their actions secret and then they would have work stoppages. They would walk off the job, so they refused to 
go to the fields and plant or harvest. They refuse to report to the mess halls. Mm -hmm. They refuse to go to these sort of private factories that were set up to make war goods in the camps. They would just stop working. Mm -hmm. In some cases, that's where that protested end, ended. So they would issue some basically demands to the administration in the different camps and then the more temporary detention or assembly centers asking for things like possibly better pay, mm -hmm. better working conditions, which is also something I wanted to get at. This idea that when you're, when you're in these camps, you're mm -hmm. working and your living conditions are one and the same. Oh, yes. So in a lot of cases when Japanese Americans were protesting against their working conditions, they were, all, they were also protesting against their living conditions. Mm -hmm. So money, wages, just a safer atmosphere, that was another demand that they often wanted to have met by the administration. Mm -hmm. Certain, just being able to have more of a say over how they use their labor, mm -hmm. safety measures, things of that nature. So in some cases they would stop working, they would actually be able to meet with administrators and there would be some compromises made. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, if there was a more positive outcome to these strikes, it ended up having more representation among the Japanese Americans mm -hmm. when it came when it came to labor decisions. So on one hand, that's that's really a, a positive thing that Japanese Americans were able to do mm -hmm. even while they were imprisoned. Now, in other cases, these strikes turned into what the administration called riots. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of cases, if you're doing research and you're reading reports, the administration is automatically saying these are riots that are inspired by ethnic tensions. Mm -hmm. These are riots that are the work of subversive Japanese Americans who mm -hmm. are acting as Japanese agents. They're not really, at least on the surface, acknowledging that these are labor demands that mm -hmm. Japanese Americans are issuing. So labor strikes, that was a big way that Japanese Americans sort of protested the violation of their civil rights, but also their labor rights. Mm -hmm. Another way would be just individuals taking individual action. So maybe a couple workers just refusing to show up to work and report mm -hmm. to duty. That wasn't anything that was widespread or, or planned on a large scale, but they took it upon themselves mm -hmm. to sort of say, nope, I'm going to take this action, stealing things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stealing uh, the tools of production yeah. <laughs> in the camps, yeah. dismantling them. These are just kind of really individualistic acts that when combined and you sort of read about them in disciplinary reports in the camps, you step back and take a wider lens to it, you can see that this is, even though they're individual, it's this collective action of people just trying to protest the best way that they can. Mm -hmm. So they were not active or passive recipients of their conditions. They really did stand up and, and try to make a case and make certain demands even while they were imprisoned. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stephanie, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.